What's up everybody, my name is Isaac and I'm so glad that you are joining us for Hope Kids Online. Really quick, I want you to drop in the comments where you're watching from and also drop what your favorite ice cream flavor is. Mine is chocolate chip cookie dough, it's the best, but hey, drop your favorite ice cream flavor and stand up, clear some space because we're about to dance and have some fun worshiping Jesus together.
Next on the song, we have Brandon singing Lasagna. <clears throat> oh, Mrs. Avery, you came to me eating a plate of lasagna. Why hasn't he turned his chair around yet? Am I not passionate enough? Am I too passionate? I knew this was the wrong song choice. No one wants to hear a song about lasagna. Come on, Brandon. You can do this. Make him turn that chair. Make him feel the pain and joy within you as you sing the last line. Lasagna. Brandon, that was beautiful. Uh, whoa, there we go. Brandon, it was beautiful. It, it, it stirred my soul deep inside. It was a multi-layered performance, like like lasagna. It's got multiple layers, right? It, I, it, that's why I guess you. It's like lasagna. I don't know what's going on with this chair. It won't stop spinning. Oh! Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And welcome to the So-and-So Show. And uh, John, uh, uh, uh. okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Kick it, jump it, wiggle it, break it. Uh. Oh. oh, come on. <laughs> hey, question for you. Yeah. What was that? I have this game called Dance King and I'm trying to beat my nephew's high score. He challenged me to a dance off. Oh, cool, can I try? Yeah, sure. Here, right. you'll need these. Oh, okay. Why do I need these? Those are the controllers. Oh, great, great. Do I have to put on the rest of the costume as well? What costume? So I just put these gloves on then and... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, well, okay. Ready? Kick it. Spin it. Kick it. Floss it. Break it. Jump it. Break it. Wiggle it. Kick it. Kick it. Spin it. Jump it. Oh! oh wow. That is tough. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Phew. There we go. Ready? Yeah. Spin it. Wiggle it. Spin it. Break it. Floss it. Jump it. Kick it. Oh, oh man. Oh. I'm never going to be able to do this. Oh, no, no. Come on. You're a great dancer. No, apparently not as good as my nephew. He's going to talk so much trash about this at our next family oh. reunion. How old is he? Almost four. Okay. Look. I think you can do this, buddy. No, I yeah, can't. Yeah, you can. All you need is a little bit of confidence. You got this. You're right. Yeah. Ready? Yes! yes. Ever since he was a young gent, his feet were made of fire. From the playground to the churchyard, all the people would admire. His moves have no equal, no matter who you bring. My middle-aged co-host sure dances like a king. He kicks like a rocket and twirls like a top. He jumps like a kanga, you know he can't be stopped. He dances like no other, the high score starts to ring. My middle-aged co-host sure dances like Believe it here, here, and here. Ah, uh, ow, oh, ouch, yeah, oh, hot, hot fire. Woo
It's Bible story time with Kellen. I see! Yeah! What's up, my good people? Hey, not much, Kellen. You? Just here to tell the Bible story. Well, then by all means, take it away. Our story today comes from the book of Judges. Now, the Israelites had turned away from God. And when that happened, God's enemies came and destroyed the Israelites' crops and livestock. God's people were so terrified, they hid in caves from their enemies, the Midianites. Hey, Bert, you see any of them Israelites around here? No, but I see some of their crops. Oh, destroy them! Okay. Hey, Bert. <laughs> Catch! And the cow jumped over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Same time tomorrow? See you then. All right. <laughs> oh, please, God, help us. <laughs> God heard his people's prayers. He had a plan to rescue them. So God sent an angel to a man named Gideon. Oh, I hope no one destroys this grain. Gideon! What? Oh, who's there? <gasps> Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. Uh, uh, pardon me, sir. Uh, the Lord isn't with us. He's deserted us. He handed us over to Midian. I am sending you to save Israel from the Midianites. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> pardon me, sir. Uh, are you talking to me? I mean, I'm the least important family member in the weakest family of our tribe. I will be with you. Uh, okay. Could you give me a sign so I'll know it's really the Lord talking to me? Um, oh, here. Take this bread and meat as an offering. Put them on this rock. Oh, okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <gasps> Whoa! <gasps> Whoa! Gideon knew God wanted him to lead the Israelites, but he still wasn't confident he could do it. So he asked God for two more signs. And God patiently reminded Gideon that he was not alone. So Gideon gathered an army of 32,000 men. With this army of 32,000, we will defeat the Midianites. <laughs> Gideon. Gideon. Oh, Lord. You, you have, have too, too many, many men. men. Oh, too many? God told Gideon that if the army had too many soldiers, the Israelites might think they defeated the Midianites all by themselves. The Lord wanted his people to put all their confidence in him. So God told Gideon what to say. Okay, so here's the deal. If any of you are scared, you can go home. What? what? Huh? Really? No, I don't believe him. This is some kind of a trick. Come on. Oh. Nope, not a joke. If you tremble with fear, you can go. All right. Okay, then. Uh, hey, See yeah, you. Yeah. Snow day. How's that, God? Still too many. <sighs> it's true. God wanted even fewer soldiers. He told Gideon to take his army down to the water to drink. How they drank the water would determine if they stayed or went home. All right. If you lap the water up with your hands, you can stay. Everyone who got down on their knees and drank directly from the water can go home. All right. Okay, then. Uh, hey, See yeah, you. Yeah. Snow day. Well, okay. How many are left? 300. Oh, boy. 
We got hey, this. No, no worries. Let's go do it. Okay, if you want. So Gideon and his army of only 300 men prepared to face an army of 130,000 Midianites. It seemed impossible, but through it all, God was with them. Everyone here? Yeah, we're right yeah. here. No, yeah, we're okay, boss. Duty. Okay. All right. Everyone gets a trumpet. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and a torch with a clay jar over it. Okay, that seems a little okay. less effective. I don't know what sure. you're yeah, Now, that. tonight, we'll go to the Midianite camp, then watch me and do what I do. Yeah, yeah, okay. we're, we're, we're with you. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll you. do what you do. Around 10 o'clock that night, the Israelites went to the place where the Midianites were sleeping. All 300 of the Israelites had a trumpet and a torch covered by a clay jar. So imagine you're asleep in the middle of the night, and all at once, you hear the sound of 300 trumpets. Break the jars! The Israelite army ran into the camp, broke their clay jars, and revealed the 300 torches. The Midianites were so confused. They thought they had been attacked by a giant army. They started fighting their own people. The Israelites chased the Midianites away. God rescued the Israelites, and in the end, they asked Gideon to be their ruler. But Gideon said, no. He said God would rule over them. The end. Action-packed story, Kellen, thanks. Absolutely. I love how God showed Gideon and all of Israel that he was what they needed the whole time. Yeah, and I loved how God used Gideon to do something amazing, even though Gideon was just a normal person. I mean, he wasn't a superhero or anything. It's true. God can use any of us to do great things. That's why we should put our confidence in him. Really great. Thanks, Kellen. Anytime. I'll see you guys later. Bye, man. Wow. God can use any of us. He, well, he could use me. Brandon. Me. I know. But how, Brandon? How? Let's find out. Reveal the question. How could God use you? That's what I'm trying to find out. <laughs> Maybe God can use you to stand up for a friend who's getting picked on. Oh, or he could use you to help a sibling with their homework. Good one. Uh, God used you today to help give me the confidence to beat my nephew in Dance King. That's great. And God used me to teach my nephew humility. Your high score is toast, Lance. But he, he beat me already. Yeah, four-year-olds are talented. Almost four. We'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Hey, you, you, you want to dance? Of course. Ready? Jump it, kick it, spin it, spin it, reverse, reverse, floss it, kick it, wiggle it, jump it, jump and wiggle it, jump and spin it, kick it, break it. <laughs> <laughs>
go and save Israel from the power of Midian. I am sending you. Uh, pardon me, sir, but how can I possibly save Israel? My, my family is the weakest in the tribe, and I'm the least important member. I will be with you. Even with a direct message from the Lord, Gideon was still nervous about the whole thing. Uh, give me a special sign. Then I'll know it's really you talking to me. So God gave Gideon a sign, sending fire to burn up meat and bread. God's spirit was with Gideon. And when the Midianites and the Amalekites gathered to attack, Gideon sounded a trumpet for the Israelites to follow. But even as the army gathered, Gideon once again pleaded to God for another sign. God responded by letting dew fall on a fleece, and then on the next day, only on the ground surrounding it. Okay. Okay, I've got it. Thank you. At last, Gideon was convinced God wanted to use him. He camped with 32,000 men at the spring of Herod and prepared for battle. Here, God spoke again. I want to hand Midian over to you, but you have too many men. Too many? Israel might brag, my own strength has saved me. Announce to the army, those who tremble with fear can turn back. Gideon did just as the Lord instructed. There, Lord, 22,000 men have gone home. <laughs> Only 10,000 left to fight. There are still too many men. Have you seen the Midianite army? Take the men down to the water. There, I will reduce the number of them for you. Even though it must have worried Gideon to lose more of his army, he did just as the Lord said. Field trip to the lake, everyone. At the water's edge, the Lord said, Some men will drink the way dogs do. They will lap up the water with their tongues. Separate them from those who get down on their knees to drink. Gideon watched carefully. Most men got on their knees and drank directly from the water, but 300 men cupped the water in their hands and lifted them to their mouths to lap. So, God, I send those 300 men home and keep the other 9,700, right? With the help of the 300 men who lapped up the water, I will save you. Let all the other men go home. Oh, um, okay. Yes. Gideon sent home every single person in the army except those 300 men. Get some sleep. Tomorrow we will figure out what's next. That night, the Lord spoke to Gideon once more. Get up. What? Oh, uh, I'm awake. Gideon stumbled out of his tent. Below, the campfires and torches of the enemy armies covered the entire valley. So many. Like, like a swarm of locusts. Go down to the camp. Listen to what they are saying. After that, you will not be afraid to attack. Wondering if he might be dreaming, Gideon snuck down the mountain to hover in the shadows at the edge of the camp. He could hear voices from a nearby tent. I had a dream. A round loaf of barley bread came rolling into the camp. It hit the tent with great force and knocked it flat. Wow, but that can only be the sword of Gideon from Israel. God has given him the whole camp. Gideon listened in shock. Wow, God, thank you. At once, Gideon scrambled back up the hill to the Israelite camp. Get up, get up. The Lord has handed the Midianites over to you. Quickly, Gideon separated the 300 men into three groups and handed each one a trumpet and a clay jar with a torch inside. Watch me, do what I do. I'll go to the edge of the enemy camp. Then we'll blow our trumpets from all around the camp and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and his men headed quietly down the slope, fanning out in groups to surround the vast enemy camp. Okay, get ready. As soon as Gideon sounded his trumpet, he smashed his jar so the torch shone brightly. The other 300 men did the same. Israelites held their ground, but their enemies panicked, confused by the trumpets and bright lights that pierced the dark night. They're coming from everywhere. The enemy armies were so confused, they began to fight each other, and then they fled in fear. 
After the men, Gideon and the Israelites chased their enemies all the way to the Jordan River and beyond until all the enemy armies were destroyed. The Israelites begged Gideon to rule over them. I will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. Yep, Gideon was an underdog, filled with doubt, but he still chose to follow God, and God used him to save the Israelites. Hey everyone, thank you so much again for joining us for Hope Kids Online. Make sure you send this out to all your friends so they can join us too. And just a reminder, we do have kids in-person services at 9.30 and 11 a.m. We hope to see you there and we'll see you next week.